<laughs> Hello, my surf fishing friends. We're in the surf. It is uh, February uh, the 17th, and we got some lines out. <laughs> We're not going to catch anything. We're not going to catch anything. It's February. The water's cold. There's no fish. But in about a month, there's going to be more fish. So let me tell you what. Decided to do a video about the five mistakes besides fishing in February that I did as a newbie when I first started surf fishing. And I thought maybe um, you might make some of these mistakes too. And if, if so, uh, maybe this will help you out. So let's go. So, I mean, mostly what I use now is a lot smaller than the hooks I was using when I first started. Like, I could fish with between a one and a one-odd hook, and I'm going to catch most all the fish, even the big fish, even the big reds, on a one hook. You don't need anything bigger than that, unless you're going for sharks, um, and you want to put on a number five-odd or a seven-odd. That makes sense. Also, with uh, like the rigs, if you're buying double drop rigs and you go to the store, you're going to see some that are like really have a lot of beads, a lot of metal on them, wire ones, and uh, you don't need those big heavy double drop rigs because it's just more gear in the water, more tack on the water, and that's probably just spooking some of the smarter fish. You'll probably catch the little ones, but the bigger ones are probably getting spooked by that. So you don't need all that big heavy gear. Bring it down a notch, including weight. You know, I like to throw a four ounce a lot in the surf, but if I don't have to, I'll bring it down to a, to a three or a two if it's calm like it is today. Not too bad. So, reduce your gear. That's number one. So to understand hook sizes, look at this chart. If you look at the top row, from eight down to number one, eight is the smallest hook and number one is the largest hook. Once you get down to a number one, it switches over to the one aught, two aught, three aught. Now a number one aught hook is the smallest and an eight aught hook is big. I like to fish in the one to one odd hook range with a circle hook. You can catch a lot of fish in that range, maybe even going smaller and not lose any. Ready for number two? Always using the same bait. I love frozen shrimp. I fish with it all the time. I really do. But I gotta tell you the truth. It's not always the best thing. You know, it does work. I've caught plenty of fish on it. You've seen my videos. But you gotta experiment. You gotta try other baits. Try squid, see if it works. Try sand fleas, see if they work. Try blood worms. I was fishing next to a guy and I was catching a couple of little whiting here and there. And this guy was pulling whiting after whiting after whiting. And my wife started laughing at me. And she's like, I thought you were such a good fisherman. And I was like, Wah. so finally I like tucked my tail between my leg, went over and like my pride and was like, how are you catching all these fish? He was like, I'm using blood worms. He's like, they're expensive, but I feel like it pays off. And I was like, eh, maybe I'll give it a try. So you should try too. Try different baits, try live baits if you can get them. And that goes for uh, even just different rigs as far as try, try throwing spoon, try throwing lures. Um, you know, every time you come down, just try something else. Bring a couple of rods, try a couple of baits on different rods. If you got a double drop rig, try a piece of shrimp on the top, a piece of squid on the bottom. You know, mix it up, catch more fish. All right, mistake number three. So maybe this is your beach house right here and you're just gonna walk down and fish right in front of it because that's convenient. Or maybe you parked your car over there and you're just like, well, I'm just gonna, I don't wanna carry my stuff, it's heavy, blah, blah, blah. So you just fish right where you come. Well, you could be missing out on catching more fish because fish look for structure. And what is structure on a beach? It's holes, deeper areas uh, that are, like it's flat and then there's a deep area, then it's flat again, that's a hole. And fish will hang out in there. And trowels, like you have a sandbar and then it gets deeper again and then it gets shallow again and it like kind of runs like through it and the fish are going to swim up through that and look for bait and look for food. So if you can find those things, at low tide you can go down and you can find them, then fish those spots when it's high tide and you're going to do a better job. You could be fishing and not catching very many fish and the guy right up from you could be pulling out fish after fish and he's using the same bait, he's doing everything the same thing. What's he doing differently? He knew there was a hole there or he knew there was trowel there. Now I got a video that explains that. So. Just to give you an example of uh, structure here, got a sandbar right here and you've got water that's coming up in this little trowel right here and this is a great place to fish um, if the water were actually deeper um, this is just an example but the idea is like little fish you'll see this they'll run right up this trowel uh, you'll see them in the, when you're at the beach and um, so the big fish will follow them right up in there and so if this was deeper this would be a great place to fish also when the tide starts going back out the water starts going back out it goes right out here and rushes out here so the fish are going to hang out here as well. So I would also fish here. That's another really nice spot. Another thing here, as you can see, there's a hole right there. It's a little, di it's deeper. If this were high tide, 
course the tide's, this is high tide, but if the water were to come up over that, or if this was low tide, I should say, that would be out in the water somewhere, and there would be fish hanging out in there. Little fish would be trying to find some safety there around the edges. Big fish would be going in there to find the little fish. So that's a hole, that's a great place to fish. This is a trowel that you can see right there. That's a great place to fish. And inside there is also a great place to fish. And that's the kind of structure you want to look for when you're on the beach. If it's just flat, there's nothing going on, let's say here, not going to be fish there, but there are going to be fish here and there. I'm sorry, my finger keeps making it blurry. All right, there we go. So the next one's almost kind of silly, but learn how to tie a couple of knots. I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put a big picture up right now and show you my three favorite knots. And you can look at videos of these online, and they're easy to learn. But when I first started fishing, I didn't like learn. I don't like to learn knots. I was a Boy Scout, and that was like where I did the worst. So. Um, but if you learn some knots, it can help you be a better fisherman because using the right knot can really help. Like I used to just tie on the hook and I used to like tie it around in a bunch of like knots and knot it up and knot it up again. Like, is that strong enough? But if you know simple knots and they're easy to learn, and it's going to keep your hook on, it's going to prevent it from breaking off, it's going to help you catch more fish because you're not going to have break offs. Um, and also things like loop knots can help you if you're using a lure because it can make the lure look more real. And then connecting different lines without using. Um, any kind of metal pieces, which are gonna attract bluefish, and just going line to line, it can help too. So let's take a look at those knots. So you first up, your most basic knot, learn and improve clinch knot. This is great for just tying on hooks when you're just doing like a flounder rig or a double drop. Number two, the loop knot. This is great for lures or jig heads because the loop lets the lure act more natural. Number three, I like a surgeon's knot if I'm doing line to line, like I do braid to mono all the time, and this is a strong knot. And the number five new mistake is just coming down here and just like, I'm just gonna go fishing. And not thinking about what you're fishing for. I mean, maybe you don't know what you're fishing for, right? Cause you're just like, I haven't learned all the fish yet. And that's very possible. In that case, throw some shrimp out there and start learning the fish. But if you know what the fish are, you can get smart about it. Like I just said for pompano, you know, you can set yourself up a smaller rod with smaller hooks and use shrimp because the pompano are gonna like that. But if you're going for something a little bigger, or maybe you wanna use, um, finger mullet because you're going for bluefish or a spoon because you're going for bluefish and you might want to use heavier pound test because of that so you start using all those things I said before the right size gear for the right fish the right bait for the right fish the right place to fish for the right fish and the right time of year to fish that's important too knowing when the fish are running is going to help you out a lot too matter of fact I got a little chart I can show you about that check this out and this is going to tell you when if you're coming down to Oak Island what you have the best chance of fishing for so you can do all of the other things right all right that's it let's go fishing all right, here's a chart that gives you a relative idea of what you can fish for, when you can fish for them, and the bait you might want to consider. If you look at spring right there, you can see the puffer start to run, the whiting start to run. Late spring, the bluefish. Into summer, you get your pompano, your sharks, and autumn, you get your black drum, your red drum. Hey, this doesn't mean that's the only time you're going to catch one of those fish. It just means that's a good time when you might want to target those fish. And of course, over on the right side, you got the bait that aligns with the fish, so you can use the right bait to catch the right fish at the right time of the year.